Hello guys and uh, welcome to a completely unplanned, unscripted, unboxing video of uh, Rechbusters Project Vril. That was a uh, Kickstarter that ran, let's just see here, uh, this game was successfully back in July, no last updated, uh, must be somewhere around here. Well, the project funded, I don't know, November 2018 to, yeah, November 2018. Uh, hugely successful board game Kickstarter, uh, raised nearly a million dollars, so plenty of stretch goals uh, unlocked. I didn't really follow the Kickstarter back then because I have plenty of miniatures. I don't play board games. Um, so I'm, I was actually very proud to skip the Kickstarter because the models look freaking awesome. But uh, a couple of days ago, I got lucky uh, on a Danish auction and got the base Kickstarter pledge, uh, heroic pledge. So all this stuff and all the unlocked stretch goals and one of the expansions with this guy, Project X expansion. So our $135 Kickstarter, uh, and I got it for under half price of the Kickstarter value because I was super lucky uh, at an auction. I haven't looked at the models. My, uh, my kid has been playing around with them, and he uh, repacked the boxes, and he's six years old. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun to uh, to unpack them. We're gonna look at the miniatures, skip all the board game pieces because I'm really not interested in that. So this unboxing will only focus on the models. Uh, we'll look at some scale with the, some of the the miniatures that I have in my collection, and uh, yeah, just have fun with it. Use the chat. Uh, tonight we're checking out a new bot. I don't know how it works. That's my manager doing that. So uh, run amok and uh, let's have fun. Reichbusters Project Vril Cargo Hold. I think this uh, this is the box containing all the stretch goals. Nice art there. She's cool. Uh, I think the board game is meant to be like... Uh, uh, Wolfenstein kind of game. <laughs> yeah, that's my son. Um, allies uh, going into a Nazi castle to uh, stop some kind of I don't know, evil Nazi stuff, evil Nazi projects. Um, he's not he's not doing much right now, but he is there. Say hi, Bloodbeard. But all right, so yeah. That's my friend, programming a bot for the future. Okay, so <laughs> this guy is freaking massive. Uh, this is the the dude from Project X. Uh, he should be in another box, really. He should be in this box. So he comes with his own huge box, uh, an entire expansion. Centered about killing this guy, I presume. Huge monster. I mean, he is a regular 28 millimeter dude. Um, sure thing, shorten the name of the bot. Um, so, yeah, this is some kind of evil project. There's like four heads here on the dude, wires and stuff, obviously mutated, got an nice uh, Resident Evil feel to him, huge robot claw, or is that a mutated hand? No, that's a robot hand. Uh, claws, spike, uh, some kind of ammo plating. I have no idea what I'm gonna use this guy for, but he's big and he was super cheap. Uh, he could fit into, uh, this is not a test, as a behemoth, using the it came from the waste expansion, 
can always use more uh, evil dudes for uh, for that game. There's another big guy down here. I think this is called a Vril Panzer. I'm not sure because I didn't follow the Kickstarter. So this has a nice Wolfenstein Return to Castle Wolfenstein feel to it. Generators on the back. Yeah, some kind of power plant here on the back. Huge Gatling gun. Nice details. Nice, uh, nice sharp details. The rivets, the rivets are really uh, easy to see. They'll paint up nicely. Take wash nicely. An iron cross on the shield there. I think there's two of these guys in the pledge, so I might take one of these and convert it to a non-Nazi version. But he's huge. I don't know what he'll fit into either. But he's cool. Lots of robot details. Lots of pistons, gears, battle damage. I mean, he's seen some action. Uh, let's see what else we have here. So, as it's typical for board games, there'll be like eight of each sculpt. Some standard soldiers, Nazi uh, Nazi fighters with uh, long cloaks and MP40s, potato masher grenade, gas mask canister here on the back. Let's see if we can get. It. Oh, it's pretty hard here with the with the shine. But these are huge. I think this is a uh, this is a 32 millimeter basis actually instead of a 25 millimeter basis. So so that's a, a, a big dude. Let's see how he compares in uh, size. So these uh let's see if we can put them down here next to each other. They're big. Here we go. So a 28 millimeter US Marine from uh, the Mars Attacks board game. They are pretty small. They're nearly 25 millimeter. A 28 millimeter uh, Terminator 2 model converted with some uh, World War II weaponry from uh, Warlord games. A Star Saga Mini. These are 32 millimeters. And he's still just a bit shorter than the uh, than the German soldier, uh, like I don't know, a millimeter or two. So these are thirty-five millimeter models. They're quite large. Um, so when using these guys, they are nicely detailed, and they are good for a uh, board game plastic. Um, but yeah, that'll do some. Uh, that'll uh, take some work. I might. Cut them off the bases and uh, put them on these uh, one millimeter Renedra bases instead. That'll take a couple of millimeters of height from those. Let's put these to a side. Um, I think there'll there'll probably be like eight or ten of each guy. Another standard soldier there. The plan is to um, to sell most of the models really. Uh, all the duplicates, I'm going to sell most of those because I don't want eight of each miniatures. And since the price was so good, uh, it will keep it down to a minimum for myself. This <laughs> So, Über Soldaten, he's got a huge, you know, power armor. He's even larger than the other guy. Three barrel Gatling gun. Robotic arm to help him carry it. Backpack. Wires. Gas mask. Yeah, he's got a pretty... He's pretty Wolfenstein looking. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. But he's cool. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to use the... Um, Hello, Aestas. Uh, these models are huge. So, welcome. Um, what is it? Some kind of mutated dog? I think he's a dog. He's like a bulldog, a guard dog. His front legs. He's got more of that. So look there. So tiny little legs. Huge front leg. 
and back kick. So this is some kind of mutated dog, six legs. Uh, he's got some small T-Rex arms up there, and these huge, with more joints. It almost looks like hands, really. Some kind of canisters on the back, probably for controlling him. So this is a nice mutant. I'll use uh, so a model like this. He's going into uh, Sona Alpha as something from the Zone of Exclusion near Chernobyl. And I'll also be using, I could also use this for uh, cyberpunk gaming. Like he's uh, gene modified and got some cybernetics. Uh, there's rabbit dogs in uh, Reality's Edge. You can roll up. Um, Skaven Clan Molder. Yeah, you could put this guy. Looks almost like a rat. He could go straight into more time if you're playing that kind of thing. Um, might be good for this is not a test as well as some kind of wasteland creature. Big guys. So two of those. That's the kind of model I might keep more. Let's just get this out of the frame. And yeah, standby for noise. There we go. So a model like this, I might keep more than just uh, just two of them. Let's see if we can get the camera closer here. Let's see. There we go. Might as well go like this. Um, because I can use him for so many games. So I might just keep him, uh, eight of those. But I'm, the, these regular Joes, regular Krauts, two of those. And I'm going to resell the other six. I don't like too many of those. Now the Uber Soldaten. So that's three of those guys. Four of those guys. More of these mutated dog thingies. Wait, we go. Those. Let's see if we have some new. Canine. German Shepherd. You can never have too many of those. So these are, uh, yeah, these are obviously big compared to a, uh, ah, he's okay. He's okay for, for this guy. But of course on the, he's on the large side. But so many games has, uh, so many games have, Canines and dogs in them as warband members, so might as well keep those. Nicely detailed. Uh, all the fur is textured on a lot of models. This would just have been, you know, uh, a clean sculpt. All right, Fido, to the side with you. All the bases are textured. That's pretty cool. You know, when you do this. There's actually no reason for when running a Kickstarter that you don't provide bases like this. And that's uh, got some got some Nazi castle going on here. Stonework. Uh, some kind of military base here. This one is probably concrete with some holes. Let's check this guy out. He's an officer. Got a Luger. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, uh, this guy is as, uh, evil Nazi officer as they come. He even got a, a monocle up there. It's hard to capture here. The camera can't see it. So, yeah. One eyeglass on one eye. Lots of medals on his chest. You can actually make out the iron cross there. That's cool. Nice details on the cloth. Again, I'm just going to keep one of these guys. Uh, as I don't play the board game, I don't need eight. So one of these guys, the rest goes up for sale. Let's see what we have here. Are they, uh, are they different sculpts? I'm not sure. So, so far, there is a lot of these standard soldiers. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Wow. A lot of these. Can't really make out if they are. I think the Kickstarter said there would be alternative sculpts for these, but they look pretty much the same. That might be a mispack. And what do we have here? Mask on. Is this a scientist? What is he holding there? Some kind of those canisters that's on the back of the mutated dogs here. So I guess if you read the fluff, real is probably some kind of, uh, I don't know, you know, the stuff that powers all the super weapons and, and the mutations, some kind of alien stuff. And he's holding some of that here. Nice big gloves. Lots of things. Either small, you know, lab glasses. Or tools here. A guy like this is just going to be good as an NPC or a VIP, an objective in some kind of a in some kind of game. Uh, paint him on a nice and white uniform, teal gloves. He's gonna look real nasty. So that was the first box. Um, and since it's my son who's been playing with them all day, and I just asked him to put them back in the box and put a lid on it, I have no idea what comes in what box. And since we don't we don't really care about board game pieces, I'm just gonna take the other big box here, see what's in there. Oh, uh, see if we can hold it up here. You know, so uh, rules, never mind those. Some kind of uh, missions. Those lots of cardboard tokens, some kind of weapons. I'm not gonna play the board game. I'm just gonna reuse, repurpose some of the. If, if I can use some of the tokens for for other games, I might save those. Otherwise, they go up for sale. So some something like this, I'm gonna keep it in my big big box of random counters for uh, some kind of shield augmentation or whatnot in in one of the games I play. But the the doors going out. The cardboards are pretty nice though. No doubt about this being some kind of evil Nazi base. Loads of cards, mission cards, whatever. No interest in those, no interest in those. But the board tiles. Yeah, I'm gonna resell those as well. Some some of the RPG players could probably use those. Nice graphics. I mean if I had backed this for the for the board game content, I wouldn't be disappointed. There's a ton of map tiles down here, of all manners of different kinds, all kind of Wolfenstein feel, you know, inside some kind of castle, secret Nazi base. So many cards. How board gamers are able to, to keep heads and tails of something like this is beyond me. I mean, this is freaking huge, and there's only one expansion pack. I have a mate, he, bought, he, he went all in, got three or four expansion packs. Um, I don't think there's any models down in this box. Lots of tokens. I have to go. I'm not going to go over these right now. I mean, some of them can probably be reused for other games. Uh, some of them are too specific. But. Tokens like this are always cool to get. Wound counters. Uh, clues or objectives for some kind of game. You can never get too many of those. These are as well, you know, guns or uh, you need to reload counters for all the various skirmish games I play. Uh, this is not a test. Zone Alpha. All those different Osprey games. Hardwired. They all need tokens. So it's always good to have something extra. Cool dice. I just love dice. This is kind of a hero quest wipe food, right? Like the old combat dice from Hero Quest. Yeah, no, uh, not a single model in this box. More cool dice. Counters like this. This is just this is just great to have. So that's nice. But I'll, I don't. I'm not sure that that there will be any kind of any kind of money in reselling uh, the boards and the tokens and the cards. 
but I've, I've done this trick a number of times with uh, other board games. I'm only interested in the miniatures, and I'm just uh, reselling everything else. And since I got it so cheap, life uh, um, Since I got it so cheap, if I can even bring in just a few, a few coins of the investment from from nearly giving away some of the boards, it just makes the deal even sweeter. <laughs> Let's see if we can just get a picture of this. So. This is how it looks when your son has been playing with it and cleaned it up. But uh, that's okay. Never mind that. So, yeah. More models. This is what it's all about. So this is it, this must be another Uba Zoldat. Bare arms, lots of muzzles. Huge hammer. That reminds me of, uh, was it Wolfenstein 2? These huge dudes. Some kind of power plant here on the back as well. They're all pretty wired up. Oh, that's his chest. He doesn't even have a shirt on. That's just pure muscle and evil. So whatever that real is, it must be doing something good for these guys. And he is huge. I mean, he is ogre-sized. I might use one of these guys actually to uh, perhaps give him another head. But this right here, this is a Fallout styled super mutant. Paint him green, give him another kind of head. I see if I can find something fin fitting for that. And he is going straight to the wasteland. This guy must be a bus. Evil doctor. I've got a nice Quasimodo thing going on here. Mutated arm. Long coat. Another power plant here on the back. Feeding this stuff into he has. There's like a hose going into his bag there. Cane. Yeah. This right here, this is material for uh, Indiana Jones too. Go whack him on the head. I think we're going to find some good guys at some point. Because obviously all these guys are evil. Uh, Nazi. I think this guy is a zombie. It looks like. It's a nice take on zombies. So his head. Right there. His head is all manner of messed up. What is the thing he's on? He's like boxed in in this huge thing. Keeping him straight. I mean, it's, it's a weird kind of armor. Why would you put this much armor on the back of a guy? And there's one of those canisters that the uh, evil uh, that the evil doctor uh, had, and he's got tubes running down his throat. So, some kind of prisoner or a guy who's about to mutate to something bigger. Uh, <laughs> these are the good guys. They're not misunderstood. No, no, I don't think they are. Now the boss man. <laughs> Some kind of a spider wheelchair. He's on the heavy side. It's this small gun here here on the side. Yeah, he's, this is a wheelchair. Another power plant on the back here. Uh, so part throne. Part vehicle. He's not... Uh, He's not doing a lot of marching, this guy. Loads of metals. I mean, he has two iron crosses on him. Some kind of power fist. Another. Another monocle right there. One eyeglass. He's cool. He's going to be the leader of something, but I don't know. I'm not sure what. So I'm a huge fan of the uh, Metro. Oh, these are... I'm a huge fan of the Metro series of uh, games uh, and uh, and books, and I've been wanting to do a Fourth Reich. That's the Russian Nazis in the uh, in those novels. And I want to do something like that for uh, Sona Alpha, and I think in the Stalker 
video games, there was also some kind of fascist uh, faction. So I've been wanting to do those for some time. And uh, I guess I have the models for it now. So just put your hands in your ears because I'm just going to pour all these guys out of this thing. There we go. All right. Creepy crawler spider thing robot. Kind of boxy. Four legs. I don't know. Some kind of drone. God drone. Kill bot. Landmine on legs. You can never have too many of those guys either. I mean, this guy, he'll just go straight in my cyberpunk games. Uh, Hardwired. Reality's Edge. And he's kind of clunky, so he could work with the, uh, what's it called, the uh, Armed and Dangerous expansion for This Is Not A Test. It features uh, robot teams. Stock Grave is coming out next year. Yeah, lots of cool sci-fi games, so, so you can't have too many robots. It's easy to stick a gun up here on the top of his head and uh, use him for something. Cool dude. Yeah, he's had a better day. This is some kind of mutation that's been really gone really wrong. I think one of the expansion packs for the game, as I just flipped down the Kickstarter page, is with the alien invasion, some kind of thing. And he's this guy looks definitely alien. He is going straight into Sona Alpha as well. This is a monster straight from the zone of exclusion at uh, Chernobyl. He's, all, he's naked, all manner of messed up, boils. What's happened to his head? Can't make out if that's a hood or he's just, you know, his face is gone. And it looks like he's been sewn together or he's one big mouth. Real creeps. Going to paint this guy with the, just going to give him a, a gray base coat and then just paint the entire thing using washes. Um, Let's see how many of those there are. Oh, that's a scientist. We've already looked at him. Another super soldier of those huge guys. Let's put those aside. We've seen those. Ooh, sentry guns. That's great as well. So, flamer, sentry gun. All right, put this inside your castle. Yes. Why would you make a flamer sentry gun? So this one has to be like a gun watching over wherever the Nazis breed. There are zombie Nazis, and in case there is a breakout, they just flame them all to hell. <sighs> flamer sentry gun. I don't know what kind of game I will use these for, but I am going to build a, a, a vault system, secret base, vault, space station for uh, this is not a test and all the sci-fi and cyberpunk games. So I can go from outside to the inside and it will fit in there. And uh, it doesn't look too futuristic. I have lots of uh, future sentry guns. Let's just find one here on uh, other games like, uh, let's see if we can find, where are they? I have too many models. Here we go. Here, so here is a uh, a sentry gun from a human interface, and it looks more futuristic, more sleek. And this thing. So this is really good for. Uh, this is really good for. This is not a test. As I'm trying to get more and more of that uh, '50s retro sci-fi feeling going for uh, for that game. You also need sentry guns in uh, hardwired. So these would be good sentry guns or turrets for uh, when playing against gangers instead of uh, corporate forces. I think that would look good. Let's see what we have here. Uh, more creepy crawlers. We already looked at those. So that's three of those so far. Female Nazi, Ilsa, the she-wolf of the SS, some kind of staff, big freaking alien eyeball, 
with eyelids, pet beholder, uh, some kind of dagger, I don't know, man. Why would why wouldn't you just assign a baddie like that, like all the other Nazi officers, like long coat? And she, but she's wearing a coat. She has long, slender legs. I mean, just put her in a freaking Nazi uniform like the other guys. Well, never mind. She's a baddie. I don't know what I'm gonna use this guy for. Um, to the side, whether. More zombies. Yeah, this guy must be a leader as well. Drawn sword. Every single one of the officers has this one eyeglass. Every one of them so far. Perfect. Uh, gun. Some kind of ray gun. Slime gun. It's even wired up to more ammo here on his... Uh, on his wrist, he's got some nice armor here. That's a nice bad guy touch. Iron cross. Uh, I like how they put those all over the place. And then they have this kind of weird, there's been this kind of weird V looking arrow sign on a lot of the, on a lot of the models. That's, I don't know, probably for Viral Rill or uh, Nazi Science Division. Oh, more bad guys here. I think these are the good guys. We're coming to the good guys here because they have a different color of plastic. I mean, they're tanned. And these I'm excited about because these can perhaps fit into all manner of different games like um, uh, this is not a test. Last Days, something might actually work for uh, modern games, some for sci-fi gaming. So this is a sniper, obviously, wearing a cloak. Standing on a box of ammunition, like you do. Some Russian words on the box there. Russian letters. So this, yeah, this, uh, is it a guy or a girl? I think she's a girl. So, this model can be used for anything, really. I think she'll go into the wasteland at some point. She's cool, uh, to the side with her. Nice hero pose going on here. Two pistols on a box there, falling backwards. German machine pistol on the back. Dagger at the side. Is he a former Nazi? Yeah, he is. He has the uh, Iron Cross right there. So either this guy is a spy or he's a bad guy turned uh, good. But it's a cool pose. Daga, daga, daga. See this guy? Girl, another girl. Cool. So, silencer. Silencer. Weird looking hat. I wonder where she's from. I think if I uh, if I took out all the character cards, they probably have a nation on them. Uh, marked on them here. Oh, she's British. At least that's a stem gun uh, on her back right there. It's a real looking hat. Depending on how you paint this up, I'm not sure she would work in a futuristic game uh, kind of uniform, but yeah, it's a cool model. Lots of female heroes here. Another one. Silenced Sten Gun. I don't know. Does any of you guys in the chat know if they actually made Silenced Sten Guns? I don't recall the rifle here. I think it has like an M1 look to it. A couple of grenades on the backpack. Mine there at the belt. Very dynamic characters. Three potato mashers. Uh, I've never heard of it. No, I don't, I'm, the, I'm not sure they they made silenced uh, stun guns. And she's wearing heels. Awesome. Yeah, you rock it, kid. <laughs> ah. Pistol, tomahawk, huge beard. He looks like Abraham from The Walking Dead. 
big arms, lots of grenades, small backpack. Another kind of... Oh, he's Norse. Can you see this? That's uh, Thor's hammer right there. That's a cool detail. So I think that's that's probably the maybe the reason why they went this. Um, I think that might be a good reason to 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 pick up the scale on these kind of board game minis. Of course, they're easier to paint, but getting a detail like a Thor's hammer on a model like this that's pretty badass. This guy right here, he's going into last days smashing some zombies in the near apocalypse i mean he's going to go into a gang of bikers or something as, as the leader that would be awesome oh they made uh, i see here in the chat they made cheap silences for the stun gun what's this guy <sighs> so beret what's with this? is this a miscast i think there's a miscast here it's like i can't see if it's meant to be like if he's smoking a pipe or a cigarette or if it's a miscast beard. I have to find some artwork of this guy. That might be a miscard. A uh, small dagger, bow, arrows, rope, officer's uniform. I don't know what the deal is with this guy. Double knife. Bow and arrow, weird looking beard, not the dagger on the on the shoe. I'm, I don't know, but he's pretty cool. I have no idea what I might use him as. Perhaps give him another head, and then use him as a tribal warrior in uh, this is not a test. Something with a big mohawk, perhaps that could be cool. Guy with a panzerschreck. Gas mask. They're pretty loaded. So two grenades, bazooka, pistol, machine pistol, lots of extra grenades. His gas mask canister is right there in the back, but he's keeping it in the build anyways. Goggles. Cool. I don't have ideas for all of this. Oh, he's nice. He's it's a shame he's so big. And look next to this guy. He's huge. I'm not I'm not sure how much of a difference it actually makes when, when you're standing up looking down at your table. I think they'll just blend in nicely anyways. Um, good enough for me at least. But he has a super cool pose. The dagger right there. Keeping his pistol uh, ready. Uh, keeping the balance right there. He must have some good stats, considering how much weaponry the other guys are bringing to the table. This guy is only wearing a pistol, a couple of knives. The guy here, what's his? What's this deal? Oh, he's British, so that's a Tommy helmet right there. Ammo cases on the back. Gas mask, pistol, knee pads. That's smart. Take care of your knees. Don't mess them up. I don't know about that guy. Here we are. Oh, he's cool. Yeah, this guy is going sci-fi. Sitting there on a barrel. He's Russian. That there, that's a Russian gun. Uh, I can see the magazine there. He's got some kind of huge... Work gloves on with some robot stuff going on as well. Lots of grenades strapped to his uh, to his leg there. The cap from a uh, tank driver. This guy would just look at home and uh, in the cargo bay of a Firefly Firefly class uh, spaceship called Serenity. He needs to go into a sci-fi game. Yep. Stargrave model right there. Flamer! He's going to be a raider and this is not a test. A broiler. You know, heavy armored flamer guys. Or perhaps go into a metro station when I get around to building that. Cleaning some uh, 
some metro sections. He might go on the Nazi team. I need some Nazis with flamers. Perhaps there's still some in the box. Uh, weird dude. I mean, he's been worked on. He's he's scarred all the way down. He's been sewn back together. There's a double scar here. Huge sledgehammer. His arm is mutated. Three fingers. Armor on the arm. Oh, he's got those things on the back. And uh, a wrench. He's seen better days. He must have escaped. Perhaps this is one of the guys that the other heroes have to rescue or something. I don't know. He'll, he'll be a mutant as well. Raider, a mutant in this... Or in Reality's Edge. In reality, says you can uh, roll up uh, crazed drug addicts. This guy might become a crazed drug addict to run around the sprawl. That's his drugs right there. Pretty crazy, obviously. And uh, I'm going to take him down protecting a noodle boat or something. This guy was on the front of the, on the box. Two, I can't remember the names of these machine guns. Oh, they're famous. They're from the First World War, right? I think water-cooled, uh, water-cooled machine guns. One of the first kind of machine guns ever. Ammo belt. There, a backpack full of ammo. I don't think he can fire this for a long time because these are going to overheat like crazy. But he's got a nice action pose. Get to that job. Um, Stengan Kukri is he Indian? Oh, it's pretty hard to sculpt a small model and make him look Indian, but he, uh, I think, this is a Gurkha. That's a Gurkha knife. Cool, those guys are badass, and they made sure to make the sheath. Raise Gurkha the right shape. So that's cool. Oh. He must be a. Uh, it's like this guy's a, a Maori. Like from New Zealand. Indigenous uh, people from New Zealand. Those warriors doing that. Uh, I can't remember what's the cool shotgun there. That dance. Wow. <sighs> This guy needs to be painted with a lot of tattoos. He even has a machete. So obviously he's, he's from around there. Uh, Ako Ako. He needs a lot of tattoos on his face. He's going to be a tribal warrior. I need to I need to take some of these and make tribals for this is not a test. Or he could go. He, you know, he could go alongside this guy. Killing zombies in last days. You know, it's just run amok. Because he, he looks sufficiently modern. Doesn't have too much military gear. You know, chest trick, shotgun, machete. They're going to be a killer team. Yeah. A haka? Haku? I don't know. Haka. It's called a haka. Le French Legionnaire. It looks like a cab from a French legionnaire. Can't recall where this kind of backpack is from. Uh, it has a metal frame. But he's probably French. Can't see what he's holding there. Oh, he's a medic! That's a bone saw! He's wearing a bone saw. There's a red cross right there. A uh, scissor in his gear. Small pistol there. Huge backpack. Is that a... And he's a captain. So he has two captain stripes there on the hat. Uh, even got some gear strapped to his arm. Yeah, I can always use another medic miniature for something. And the last hero guy here. Also running. Shotgun in the backpack. Tommy gun in the hand. A revolver. Ammo belt across the chest. Yeah, this guy is an American. Huge freaking gun. 
Models like this, I don't really know what I'm going to use for perhaps make a continuation of government warband for uh, this is not a test because they look very military and they look very uh, World War II. Some of the guys look, uh, yeah, real World War II and not very um, weird war. So they can't go in a sci-fi setting and or regular modern. Yeah. Again, I'm just going to make some noise, pour out some models from this plastic, so uh, eyes, eyes closed, ears closed. There. This is a lot of models. I think I made a count, and it was around uh, 125 models I got for uh, under half price of the Kickstarter set. So I'm really impressed with that. That's a lot of, uh, of minis. Another sniper. Perhaps this is the same girl as uh, as the uh, as the first hero. Let's see here. They both have a cloak. Uh, they have the same kind of sniper rifle. So either uh, these are twins or it's uh, probably some kind of Kickstarter exclusive uh, jibba jabba. Same kind of belts and pouches. Yeah, this is the same character. I don't know why there's two, but that's one of those things with Kickstarters, right? All those Kickstarter exclusive stuff. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Kickstarter exclusive. What's this? This is another monster. He is uh, he's different from the first tentacle dude we saw uh, earlier. He's all manners of messed up and even more nasty. Holy smokes. Into the zone and wasteland with you. Or science fiction. I need to make some neutral bases for these. I mean, and just cut off these basins and perhaps sell those to uh, somebody who needs the most and just make my own. But I need to make a neutral base so he can go into different kinds of wastelands and even some kind of science fiction game because this guy would also do well in an infected sp space station. Don't skip leg day. Look at those tiny little legs and all that crap on his upper torso. He should have really strong legs because he's carrying around a lot of mutated muscle right there. Let's see. Uh, more creepy crawly spider bots. This is an alternative pose, I think. Didn't the other guys have their legs farther out? I don't know. So aside with those, another super soldier. This guy with a hammer and a shield. He's actually, a, this is a very cool, like he's bracing for attack. I might have to check out if I can hot water bend these. Um, they're pretty cool. And if I could put one into boiling water and then change the pose when the plastic is hot so he, he gets the shield in front of him and, and the hammer like drawn like this and then cool him down in uh, ice water, then you have, instead of these uh, two monopose models, you'll have two different ones. I'll have to see if that... I think that'll work. It often works with this uh, cheaper uh, board game plastic. Is that a gun? <laughs> That's a gun on his shield. Wicked. <laughs> uh, that's another one. More. Oh, well, he, he was a Nazi soldier. I mean, he's got the German helmet. He's got at least some uniform bits left. Um, sword legs. Like legs augmentation, I'm a, this guy must be fast, a fast runner because he has the extra joint. This, these arms here on the back, they're definitely half alien mutation. So it's part weapon, but it's also, this is all skin and growth. And he's got a freaking big tail. Yeah, these uh, these Nazis have found some alien stuff. He looks creepy. So if I get around to making a Fourth Reich uh, Metro-styled evil warband, these need to be enemies for them. They can't prob 
possibly be on the team with them. I might convert these as well, you know, take off the uh, the head and add some kind of other mutant head. So yeah, with no work at all, you'll go from um, you'll go from German look to any kind of other mutated uh, dude or alien. You know, put a stick an alien head on this guy, and he's uh, he's straight up sci-fi with the uh, with no World War Two look to him at all. Good potential for conversion. That's gonna be fun. There's more of those. Yeah, this guy is like the other one. You know, the other zombie with that weird shell casing on the back. But this has a more traditional zombie pose. They must be zombies. But why would you? Well, he won't bite because he's covered in in armor. I mean, he's all cased in, so he can't be a very effective weapon. On this, this is a bomb. He could be a bomb carrying zombie. You know, just scrambling to the heroes and then blow up. I'm wondering how many of these I guess right, since I haven't read the rules and I haven't followed the Kickstarter, so I have no idea what the game. But, but but that's what they'll be for uh, for me. Oh, there's another pose on the standard soldier here at the end. So the first guys like guard duty. And this one is at a firing position. I'm not sure I'm going to keep these. I might sell off all the regular soldiers and just buy a box of uh, Warlord Games uh, 28 millimeter German military dudes. And then use all the characters and the monsters and the super soldiers. For uh, for the evil warband, for for Sona Alpha, and then just uh, sell these guys because, I mean, this guy, this officer, never mind that he's too big, that doesn't matter. Uh, never mind if the uh, the super soldier is is huge compared to a normal soldier. That really doesn't matter. He's a super soldier, but these guys, they're obviously human and just regular human so i'm not sure i'm gonna keep those i might sell all of them actually and just uh, get a box of uh, of, of right-sized uh, enemies i'll have to consider that i'm not sure what do we have here uh some guy some scientist or slave he's wearing protective gear protective mask uh a suit covering all of it He's got uh, some kind of uh, apron on and carrying this huge canister of some obviously deadly stuff. Don't spill it. You'll make everything into zombies. His face is pretty boring. Another conversion potential. I mean, I know he's looking, he's supposed to look like he's protected in this overall protective suit, but there's no detail on the face. Two goggles. He looks like a minion. I should paint one up as a minion. Yellow and blue. Blue shirt, blue. That would be a fun one. I'm going to do that with one. They're cheap. But other of these guys need either to just go away or have a conversion done to their face because that's a boring head and the head is, is such an important part of the of the minis. More zombies. See if we've seen all of those around now. Or zombies. These need some hot water treatment as well. I like them. They're they're nasty monsters and they're good for it. I have so many zombies. I have modern zombies, post-apocalypse zombies, fantasy zombies. I, I counted as something. I think I've painted up 200 different zombies. Zombies with snow bases, swamp zombies. Uh, now I have evil Nazi zombies. Yay. But these need hot water treatment as well. You know, put this guy in hot water, bring up the arms for the classic zombie pose. Oh, um, Cool him down, cut them off the bases, bend some of the legs so it's so he's dragging his leg, bend them over. Um, so I actually might keep all of the zombies and just turn them into uh, make all the poses different. That could work, and that I don't know if there's eight times eight, so sixteen Nazis armored zombies. And if I can make them all into different poses, that'll be really cool. Still keeping the prowess down. Let's just take these. So we have seen these. Uh, the scientists. 
the other guy carrying there more soldiers zombies uh, creepy crawler bots is there any of these models we haven't seen yet more super soldiers zombie 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 soldier german shepherd Way with you guys here's another guy we haven't seen yet what's with this guy he's wearing a big clunky robot head is he a <laughs> is he a world war ii cyborg perhaps he is like a weird war cyborg so he says his arm is inside this obviously a weapon some kind of beam weapon perhaps or chemical spray uh, wire going over here to this uh, power plant backpack thing it's got some exhaust vents there on the side uh, a smaller gun here so a lot of mechanical stuff going up here i mean this must be heavy he's going to have back problems really poor dude but he's probably dead i'm not feeling anything psychotic from all the meds This is a weird model. But I'm going to use him for a reality set because there's a uh, NPC character that's a, um, what's it called, a ZZZ zombie, perhaps. Some guy who's uh, messed up in a reality, uh, virtual reality suit and who's just rampaging around, going crazy from playing virtual reality. This could be that guy. I mean, all suited up. Paint him in bright neon colors, painted like there's some lighting coming out from this weird helmet, and he's rummaging around the sprawl, causing damage left and right. Nice. Bestiary entry covered. Alarm. A big one. It's going to be a good objective marker for some kind of game with some guards at a base, and they can't make it to the alarm, and it's going to mess it up for me. Uh... This will work for uh, Zone Alpha as well. I think it's a uh, big. I think it's just a counter for the game. The game is about how many Nazis can you kill, something like that, before the alarm is raised, and then they swarm, and you have to uh, go real shoot them up. It's a nice little piece. That's a zombie. We've seen those. That's another dog. Muted a dog. More soldiers. Another virtual reality playing guy. More soldiers. Yeah. More mutated pit bulls. I really like these guys. They're just super nasty. One could go in Necromunda as well. I mean, there's a nice Necromunda feel to this. I think there's a... Uh, he even has these robot part of armor over his head. I think it's uh, the Orlock gang could probably use something like this. Yeah, I think we've been all over it. More robot scuttlers and scientists and soldiers. Yeah, so that was uh, that was 126 models. This guy is just so badass. I mean, holy smokes, he's big. And um, like this robot right here. And I have some models that I scored for free after doing something like this with the Dust 1947 game. Um, and there's more allies, you know, some standard allied troopers, and there are more power armored uh, Nazi troopers, and they seem to be pretty fitting for these guys in size. Uh, there's some big mech units for those as well. So it's actually going to make up some some cool uh, some cool armies for a game I'm not sure about. But nice deal, half price on a kick below half price on a Kickstarter. Uh, lots of tokens. Oh, my token collection for all manner of different new cool dice that I have no idea what I'm going to do with, but dice are cool. Super big monsters that's uh, below just under half a euro per miniature, and that's not considering if it's the uh, big dudes. I mean, he's as big as my head, really. Or the little dudes. Um, lots of conversion material models for Last Day, Sumpy Apocalypse, Reality's Edge. Hardwired, this is not a test, and Zone Alpha, so it's pretty much all the games that I cover. I know there's some cool sci-fi games coming up. Uh, Stargrave next year. I'm obviously going to play that. I love Frostgrave. 
There's uh, two indie games uh, being developed right now in Denmark, two different Danish designers making uh, new science fiction games. So good potential to use some of this in there. A very nice deal. Going to do a cleanup uh, in the garage, take out models and projects from all over the place that I don't use and sell it. I do that a couple of times a year. I did it early in the summer. I'm going to do it again now with this. Sell off excess stuff, sell off excess uh, sprues. I don't want it lying around. And uh, I'm not going to make a profit, but I'm going to end up with even cheaper models for myself. Best thing about board game models like this is they don't break. And that's great because I want my kid to play with my miniatures. Uh, it breaks him, brings him a lot of joy and they get more use. And a model like this won't break and the paint won't chip. So that's uh, that's even great. And my son is obviously already falling in love with the biggest evil monster there is. Um, that concludes this uh, unboxing. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for checking in. I'm going to unbox all the, the, the new stuff that I get. So uh, drop uh, some likes and follows on the social media um, to get more stuff like this. Just going to post it here in the chat, some links. Um, I'll post on Twitter when I go live on... Uh, on uh, Twitch, I uh, if it's planned, if it's some kind of planned stuff I'm doing, then I'm also going to post in relevant uh, Facebook groups and of course the Discord channel. So jump over there if you don't want to miss uh, stuff like this. Um, now it's a bit of time for a cleanup, sorting out the stuff, and uh, I'll see you around for something uh, next time. Bye.